Sweden, Finland and Norway in winter is a truly magical place and has been on my bucket list for a very long time. In addition to skiing, there are also more unknown winter sport activities such as an icebreaker trip, a swim in the sea, motorsports or snowmobiling through the snow-covered forests and over frozen lakes. Like most people, I dreamed of watching the Dancing Northern Lights live. How did I and the expedition truck cope with the extreme cold and did I really find the Northern Lights? Well, adventurers, let's find out. My journey started in Gothenburg, where I made an appointment with a tire dealer to convert my winter tires into spiked tires. The spikes are screwed in with a cordless screwdriver so that they can be removed later on. The whole thing took about one and a half hours and it was not too soon as at the very next stop in Trollhättern the ice queen took over the control with heavy snowfall and cold. The time had come for my merino underwear. I spent a warm and cozy night in Trollhättern, but then the next morning... It looks like I have a serious issue with my motor generator, so it's not loading anymore. And uh, since that I don't have uh, light. I just could start the engine in the morning and I'm driving now to the next Mercedes dealer without light. The problem was solved quite fast by grounding the alternator new to the truck frame. We took the opportunity to tighten the V-belts and then finally I could set sail for the north. The E45 is Sweden's highway to the north and my route should more or less follow it. Say try to keep the route free of snow, but after heavy snowfall this can take some time. Shortly afterwards I was able to earn my reputation as a road angel. Try my best, just after the truck repair. He stuck there for five hours. Let's help him. I am for Turkey. Huh? I am for Turkey. Turkey, Turkey, Turkey. Turkish, okay. <laughs> My investment into the spikes and the 30 ton tow rope had already paid off and the Turkish German friendship was also boosted. Further north, the E45 highway becomes a narrow road covered in snow and ice. Driving here is therefore an enormous challenge, especially encountering other trucks. The center markings are barely visible and the edge of the road is not properly cleared. The most common cause of accidents here is getting too far into the snow with the right wheels. The vehicle is then pulled to the right into the ditch as if by a magnet, as in this case. Two kilometers further on the next truck was already stuck in the ditch. But I was extremely lucky myself. Despite spikes and winter tires, I went straight ahead at this junction instead of to the right. Fortunately, the snow was soft and there was no other vehicle around. The front wheels were deep into the snow, but thanks to the differential locks I was able to free myself after a while. It is difficult to find places to stay overnight in the forest in winter, as most of the tracks are not cleared. In Hamra National Park I was lucky to find a cleared track. It was actually too narrow for my truck and the snow was over a meter deep on both sides. A nature park ranger recommended this small parking bay to me right next to a shelter with fireplace and firewood. Standing around the campfire in complete loneliness in the snow-covered Swedish forest in the Arctic cold. Those are the magic moments you will remember forever. I had found the true spirit of overlanding. The park administration sent the snow service the next day. I was therefore able to continue on the snowy road through the national park. It hadn't been completely cleared, but the snow wasn't a major problem for the truck. I'm in the city of Östersund and I just came here to refill diesel and uh, buy them food. And in the second roundabout I made a 100, nearly a 180 degree slide uh, because my uh, strokes or the spikes are more or less useless under these conditions. So if it is icy I don't have any control about the truck. I found a company selling me 500 additional one. 
and uh, another company they will drill it in tomorrow so it's some money again but it's much cheaper than having an accident because it's the second time in two days when I lost control about uh, the vehicle. The mechanics were pretty smart. They simply lifted the front axle, then you can turn the wheels without taking them off. After just one hour the new studs were fitted. On the way north there was heavy snowfall all day and I had to stop every few kilometers to clear the ice from my windscreen wipers. Next one to help. This time the road angel failed. He has no plug on his truck to pull it forward. That's why we tried to pull it backward, but it had no chance. Even with the differential locks, it was just spinning. So he's from Ukraine and I earned two <laughs> bottles of beer. These are the moments, I hate it. <laughs> uh, I just drove a little bit to the side to let a personal vehicle pass. Then it happened, so no chance. So the last two weeks I had two trucks out. But there was now a local Swedish guy and he calls a friend with a, a farm tool and hopefully in half an hour he will come over and pull me out. Oh my god. So we tried to pull backwards but uh, had no chance and then we pulled forward and I made the differential locks in and steered to the left and finally it happened. So there is no leak under the car and I guess no, no damage so I gave him all my money I had, 80 euros. <laughs> yes. Sometimes I'm asking myself what I'm doing here. Yesterday I checked the oil level of the engine, which was okay. Uh, to do so I had to open the lid, and but uh, when I tried to close it I, I couldn't do it anymore because the locking mechanism is, let's say, frozen and I had no chance uh, to close it. So now it's loose, you see, and by trying to close that even the plastic was damaged. So I need temperatures above zero degree. But to fix it now for the trip, I make a smart repair. <laughs> it's better than new. And it was frozen within a minute or so, even less. It's minus 20. And I, idiot, uh, make a snowmobile tour. <laughs> uh, the tour guide mentioned um, add every layer you have uh, because it's cold and it's a large tour which takes about three hours or so. Let's see how it works out. Actually, I feel pretty warm, but this will change in an hour or so. <laughs> Snowmobiles have between 60 and 120 horsepower and the maximum speed is between 120 and 180 km per hour. From a speed of 50 km per hour onwards it gets very bumpy and I didn't dare to go faster than 60. Snowmobiles tip over quite often and it is better not to end up under the machine which weighs around 200 kg. 
You should also never go alone as the snow of the pass is over a meter deep. Who hasn't dreamed of crossing the frozen sea on an icebreaker? Sweden has four official icebreakers. The Polar Explorer has been used for tourists since 2016. An icebreaker pushes itself onto the ice with its bow and then breaks it with the weight of the ship. The diesel consumption is uh, about 1000 liters per hour. Visitors are allowed to move freely around the ship and can view the engine room and the bridge. After a while the ship stops in the middle of the sea and one can leave it over the gangway and walk around the ship. Now if you ask yourself the question, is it safe to leave the ship? The answer to this question is loud and crystal clear, well, mm, yes. The ice, which is up to 70 cm thick, can support heavy bodies and is perhaps not the real problem. But the absolute highlight of the trip is the swim in the Baltic Sea between the ice blocks. You put on an neoprene dry suit which is absolutely waterproof and then you get into the water. The amount of air in the suit insulates very well and one floats like a cork on the water. It is impossible to sink and an unforgettable experience. Is it cold? No. <laughs> Shortly afterwards I crossed the border to Finland and continued my journey on small icy side roads through the endless forests of Finland to the north. Some time later I reached the Arctic Circle for the first time in my life at least on my own wheels. How does it actually feel to live in a truck camper above the Arctic Circle at temperatures as below as minus 30 degrees Celsius? In short, warm, cozy and dry. The cabin has no cold bridges, only at the windows the moisture freezes a little on very cold nights. In the morning, simply wipe off the moisture and air the cabin properly to keep it dry. The vehicle is gas-free and cooks with an induction field, which is also the biggest energy consumer. The cabin battery is charged by the motor engine or by solar panels on the roof which does not work sufficiently in winter. If one plans to spend several days in the wilderness, one can use an emergency power generator or, like me, a small gas camping stove that I carry for safety reasons. The 6 kW diesel heater keeps the cabin warm at all times and is more than adequately dimensioned. Scandinavian hospitality is legendary, which is not only reflected in the excellent cuisine, but also in lovely architectural gems. The Northern Lights village is a village of small huts with a north-facing glass roof. The bed is underneath, so if you are lucky you can see the Northern Lights from your bed. After almost three weeks in Scandinavia, I was still eagerly awaiting my first aurora. I wondered if that would happen on this trip. This uh, bumping of the RPM display um, is uh, alternator problem number three. This is really... To cut a long story short, I had a pretty sick neck because the second mechanic missed the last cable shoe to fix. But I considered the incorrectly displaying ref counter to be a minor risk from an electrical point of view and simply ignored the problem for the journey. The day started off pretty hard. But later the sun came out again and had one of my best days of traveling so far, despite of the wobbling ref counter.
200 kilometer north of the arctic circle in finland is the snow village hotel located it consists entirely of snow domes that are connected to each other by tunnels it is rebuilt every winter and the hotel rooms are lovingly designed by different artists this let's call it door <laughs> is made from ice as well But how is the hotel really built? Surprisingly simple and brilliant. A dome airbag is inflated and surrounded by a frame. Fresh snow is filled into the space in between, compressed and sprayed with water. As soon as the dome is finished, the airbag is removed and the next dome is built. Guess what I will do here next? <laughs> Winters are long and tough in Finland and winter sports are not only practiced on skis and skates. Because of the harsh weather conditions, the Finns are considered to be some of the best drivers in the world. To put a misquote in the mouth of Karl Clausewitz, the famous military scientist. I had expected an epic battle against brave Finns, but I found only tourists and victims, but no opponents. Could have come from Clausewitz, but it's from me. The snow village in Finland was already extremely impressive and I didn't expect that the ice hotel in Sweden to be any better. Founded in 1989 in Likuruna to attract tourists to the north, it is now an institution that attracts countless tourists all year round. You can stay overnight in the rooms and suites. The suite is about 1300 euro per night or enjoy the hotel as a visitor during the day. The construction time is about six weeks every year and requires 10,000 tons of ice and 30,000 tons of snow. For some years now, there has been a permanent ice construction, which is kept at minus five degrees Celsius in summer or with air condition. The rooms are designed by artists with each room representing a specific theme. In addition to the ice bar, you can also try your hand at being an ice bar. Well, it's meant to be, it's getting flames. Flames, okay. Makes sense with ice flames. Okay, well, as an artist, why not? <laughs> I can't stop using my photo, it's absolutely gorgeous. So this should be a um, steamboat or so. It was time to make serious miles heading north. The next morning I set off very early to drive the last 500 kilometers to the North Cape. The snow-covered winter landscape became a treeless tundra with low bushes. The North Cape is located on the island of Magaroya and is connected to the mainland via the 7 km long North Cape tunnel. The road passes under the sea and reaches a depth of 212 meter which makes your ears pop. The road conditions were extreme. Also, the sun was shining brightly. It was accompanied by extreme strong winds and snow drifts and, in some cases, completely icy roads. And then, finally, the North Cape <laughs> on my bucket list for decades and never reached. Made it! <laughs> oh my god, what a trip!
the stay was no fun because of the storm, despite having appropriate clothing, but it was nice and cozy in the truck. The night at the North Cape was very stormy. Sleeping was only possible with earplugs and the truck rocked like a train all night. At least I was able to see the Northern Lights the first time, even if I couldn't photograph them because of the storm. From the North Cape all roads lead south and the Norwegian coast is one of the most beautiful and diverse coastlines in the world. Fjords, islands and bays, the breathtaking coastline culminates in the island of Senja and the Lofoten. Hundreds of islands and islets, many inhabited and connected by ferries, underwater tunnels and spectacular bridges. The Lofoten Islands are located about 100 to 300 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle in the Atlantic Ocean and are undoubtedly one of the most beautiful landscapes in the world. On my first night in Lofoten Islands I was rewarded with the Northern Lights easily and conveniently right outside the door of my camper. Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce the most famous, most beautiful and most insignificant soccer field in Scandinavia, perhaps even in the world. The soccer pitch belongs to the small, pittoresque fishing village of Henningsware, which stretches across several small islands and was named one of the most beautiful sports fields in the world by National Geographic in 2017. Around 500 residents live here and the fishing port is one of the most important in the Lofoten Islands. The history of the village dates back in 1769 and it has retained its natural beauty to this day. The location on the islands in the middle of the North Atlantic is spectacular in itself. A little further south on the Lofoten Islands lies Nussfjord, another beautiful fishing village. The fishing village is now a museum village and some of the cabins are rented out to tourists. Due to the high fjord, the harbor offered protection early on and the area was settled as early as 400 AD. Up to 1500 fishermen used to live and work in Nussfjord. In the very south of the Lofoten lies Moskenes, another idyllic place surrounded by imposing mountains and a rough sea. This is one of Lofoten's most popular photo spots, which can easily be photographed from the nearby bridge. Photographers from all over the world can be found here at any time of day or year. The southern tip of the Lofoten Islands is connected to the mainland by a ferry. Back on the mainland and the border with Sweden is the Saltfjellet National Park, where cold ice, slippery roads and meters of snow were back, a magical landscape. Crossing the Arctic Circle again, this time heading south, was another emotional moment. You can see my fun in my permanent grin, but the joy wasn't to last too long. <laughs> This was just in a tunnel, um, another truck encountering. I was on my side, but he not. <laughs> I'm really happy that it's not more serious. Encountering other trucks was the most stressful and dangerous part of the journey. To avoid ending up in a ditch, everyone drives as far as possible in the middle of the road and that goes wrong at some point. The mirror that came off was just the tip of a series of hair-raising situations over the last weeks. But wait, Marcus, wasn't there another serious situation with the truck? Uh, yes, that's right. 
two hours after the first attempt to fix my alternator issue, this happened. Well, now I'm stranded uh, 27 kilometers to the next uh, Mercedes dealer. So I guess what happened is that the mechanics this morning when he fixed the uh, generator issue uh, made more force on the V-belts and they may be broken, so one or two, because I lost um, steering support um, and the motor engine was overheating and a lot of warning lamps came up. So I just went here, uh, engine temperature was to uh, about 120 degrees and I tried to call the next service, but it's too late now. So I have to spend the night here on the highway, which uh, is pretty comfortable, as you can see. <laughs> It's no fun at all. So uh, it started with a, with a generator issue and now I have a complete um, uh, engine failure. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Well, it's serious. There's a main wheel which is loose and that's why everything happened. So they told me now to the next city, to the Mercedes dealer and then we'll see. At the workshop they quickly discovered that the water pump was destroyed. This was caused by over tightening the V-belts in the first workshop. The replacement part was ordered and fitted without any problems and I rented this small cozy Swedish house and a rental car for five days and set out a heavy snowstorm. Actually, I only had a cable shoe contact problem for five euros, which then led to a destroyed water pump by the first mechanic. The second workshop then forgot to tighten a bolt on the exhaust pipe, which caused my turbocharger to stop working properly, and the cooling water system wasn't completely tight as well. But broken, repaired trucks can also appear with new trucks. After all, I do have at least a few new parts in my vehicle. The harshest winter in Scandinavia for 25 years. Mountains of snow and record temperatures down to minus 43 degrees. Cancelled trains, closed highways, 7000 kilometers on ice roads. How was the trip and would I do anything differently? Well, apart from my little truck hiccups, great. Both man and machine coped extremely well with the temperatures. The route planning was very good. I started in Gothenburg at the beginning of February and was on the road for six weeks. I drove the loop counterclockwise to the North Cape. I would do it clockwise today because then you can experience the Lofoten Islands in deep winter. The most beautiful winter impressions, apart from the Lofoten Islands and the North Cape, I found on the mainland in Sweden near Arjeplok on the Arctic Circle. The cold, the snow-covered landscape and mountains of snow were like a winter wonderland from a child's dream. Other than that, fit winter tires and screw in as many studs as possible, also the studs are already relatively stripped down after about 2000 km. I hope you had fun as well, subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up, see you soon.